Welcome back to Shop Talk. I'm Pinky Webb sitting in for Pia Ontiveros. We're still talking about graphic designing as a career option. In this segment, we are joined by Nico Puerto Lano, a graphic designer. Nico, welcome to Hello. Shop Talk. Hello. All right, so you grew up in the States. Uh, half of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I left here when I was 10. 10 years 10 old. 10 years old. And um, you studied? Um, studied first at Hunter College. That's in New York, That's too. in New York. Mm -hmm. And then I transferred to School of Visual Arts. And that's where I finished. School of Visual Arts. Yes. What was it like? I don't know. I was never in Heat class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that ends the show. They can say I was working. So. <laughs> um, I mean, if you no. were there since then, it would be hard to really speak the language. And, and I guess you speak it at home. No. Um, okay. Only when my parents get angry. You know, yeah, the, 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 the words come out. <laughs> okay, but how was it? I mean, what's studying? Uh, what, what was like studying in the states for you? Uh, exciting, because uh, one is everyone in your class was as passionate as you were, so everyone was really trying to up the ante all the time. Mm -hmm. So even though you're all uh, quote unquote in competition, you're also all colleagues, because you never know your classmate next to you could be either your your uh, your partner for work or it could be your boss, or vice versa. Right. So it was good. It was very healthy. Everyone was passionate. And uh, how long were you in the States for, in New York? Let's see. Um, I was left when I was 10, and I came back when I was 27. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what the math is. 17. <laughs> 17, 18, 18 years. So after graduating, you still worked in, in New York, right? Yes. Okay, and then you were saying that um, you're, you were asked to work for Rhino. When I was in, still in college, uh, they saw my work and they wanted to take me in uh, before I graduated. So you already have people watching out for up and up and coming graphic designers. Yeah. And then, kinukuha na kayo. They try, yeah. uh, but I told them, um, you know, it's I I promised my mom I was going to finish because I didn't finish my other school. So I told them I, I really have to finish. What do you mean you have to finish your other school? Because I just left, I transferred, but I didn't finish the degree. I didn't get my diploma. But I spent four years uh, over there. I did my major, but I never finished my requirements, yeah. the humanities requirements. Right. Then I transferred. Okay. <laughs> so, so? Then I had to start over when I transferred to School of Visual Arts. So that was another four years um, of, of school. Mm -mm. And that's why I was saying I was hardly in class because most of the stuff in the beginning I already knew. So I had to work to pay for college. Mm -mm. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of times I was working already. And I think the school was really you know, to tell my mom, look, Ma, I will finish. Yeah, you know, and you did. That. And I did. Okay, but what was it like working and studying? Was it, is it something <laughs> you recommend? Is it healthy? For it, it depends on the person. Uh, so there are some people that can do it, and there are some people who can't. How difficult is it? Um, I mean, what are the hours like, even? What sleep? I don't know what that is anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to some, some degree, of yeah. course. Um, because one is you have to be on time, you know, whether it's for school or work, mm -hmm. um, paying the bills. Yeah, but work is part-time work. Yeah, it was part-time work. Mm -hmm. And um, could work be done at home? Um, yes. Uh, during the time, I was doing freelance also. So a lot of it was homework, meaning work at home, <laughs> not schoolwork, <laughs> homework. Yeah. Uh, and then, but there was a, a certain point in my life where I had to get a steady job uh, to make sure that I can pay for school and for an apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, but... That was the lifestyle I wanted to live, so I had to be able to pay for it you know, if I wanted that lifestyle. So it was difficult, but I think you know if there's if you're passionate, if you believe in it, you could do it. So you graduated. Tell us what happened after that. When I graduated, I finally went full time uh, at this visual effects company um, called Rhino Effects. Uh, I think they're they're ranked uh, up there with you know Digital Domain, ILM, but they do commercials as opposed to film. Top ten visual effects company yeah. in, in the in US. In the US. Mm. Uh, wow. So it's it's not that easy to get in. Yeah. It's not that easy to get in. And I spent Did you apply or did they did they get you? Um they they got me. Wow. Um <laughs> well, I also had to apply. I mean they they told me they they invited me to come over and but I still had to present. Yeah. Uh, but they, it's I I I mean I, I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But it's different um it's like they already asked you, hey, maybe you can apply yeah. um, in our company mm -hmm. rather than you just really walking down the street or having, oh, yeah, having yeah, yeah. Rhino in, in, in mind this whole time and submitted your resume. Yeah. But they it was showed interest. They in showed the interest. Um, I guess I was lucky because my teacher worked there. 
Oh, and that's it. That, that was, the, that was the, 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 the link. Yeah. And he saw my work, and he said, do you want to work for us? But I was still a junior in college. Um, I, like I, have my, I still have my senior thesis and all this stuff. But he told me, just go, go, to, you know, go to my office and just talk to the bosses. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. At first, um, they just wanted me for, to do one project, to test me out. And then after that, one project. And it was just me. So I was kind of worried. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's just me. It's my first project. And it's like a real project yeah. uh, for, uh, for, for a commercial. Um, but everything went okay. And then they- Did you do well? Well, they asked, you know, they, <laughs> they, asked, you to <laughs> they stay. asked me to stay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not so bad. When mm -hmm. I graduated, they um, automatic. I was just gotcha. already in. How long were you working for Rhino FX? About two and a half years. That's quite long. Yeah. And then you, um, what, what would you <laughs> say, no, we're not going to get there yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was the most difficult work you did for Rhino? Wow, most difficult work. Would you say it's almost all the same? Just they're, all, they're all challenging. Um, there's not one particular thing that was, uh, was difficult. Um, they're all difficult or challenging. You spend many nights trying to figure out certain, uh, certain things and how to do. Um, a lot of things are not automatic. There may be some visual effects or design that needs to be done from scratch where no one has thought of anything. So you spend lots of time trying to you know, troubleshoot, trying to figure out how do we do this effect. So Can you give us an example? Um, Just so we understand. All right, one example, better. there's a commercial for uh, chloroseptic, which is uh, for your throat. Uh, I think it's, and the idea was it's supposed to soothe uh, your, your uh, itchy, itchy throat. So it's all 3D, and the idea was to go from typography, which is just burning letters, into soothing ooh letters with water. And oh, the question okay. was, how do you blend the two from red to blue? So that was, that was very challenging, because that was, that was my red project. Red was the itchy. Yes. Yeah, okay, letters. And, and then, then going into blue, and how, that, how would they blend yeah. the transition from that, where it won't be like a jump cut. Mm -hmm. So that was my, that was the project given to me. They were like, all right, you figure it out. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Very challenging. How did you do it? Uh, trial and error. A lot of trial and error and trying to figure out a smooth flow so that it won't be a cut. Because yeah. what happens is the chloroseptic bottle pours into the, to soothe the warm, uh, warm red letters and they become blue. Blue. Mm -hmm. So it's finding that transition. You know, a couple days and a few hours, not going home. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you just, uh, are there times that you just say, I'm done, there's nothing I can think of? Do you call friends and say, I'm really lost, I can't, I oh, can't sure, figure sure, out sure. what to do next? Yeah. And I think that's what I liked about uh, working in New York, because uh, most of my friends also work for different companies who are also, let's say, our competitors or whatnot. But everyone's open to express their, uh, their techniques or whatnot. Mm. Um, so it wasn't bad. You know, sometimes if I'm stuck, I told them, look, I have this project, I'm trying to do this thing, and then people help out which is really good, even if, you know, they're, they're like a quote-unquote competitor. Mm. So Do they get a cut from your salary if they help no. you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it works, the things it works both ways, right? So if they also have Even problems, they, yeah. What's your best, uh, your best design, you think, uh, for Rhino? For Rhino? Maybe uh, I helped rebrand uh, the company mm. uh, in terms of their logo and their, um, their, their character. I think that was the, one of the... And so it's internal. Internally, I think that's one of the things I'm really proud of. Okay. So uh, you were the, with them for two and a half mm -hmm. years, and then you came back to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. at what, uh, what year was that? 2004. And you came home because of? Because I fell in love. <laughs> 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 exactly. Pag -ibig, pag -ibig. <laughs> we'll get there later. <laughs> but then again, we won't tell you first why. I mean, yeah. with whom. And uh, we'll show you some of the designs of Nico. Because, mm -hmm. of course, very famous here, Rico Blanco. Tell us more about um, this work. This, actually, um, our current client, which is human, and they asked us to do uh, a design to promote uh, Rico Blanco's new line. Um, and the things they liked our design, meaning um, our look and our signature uh, design. So they asked us to just have, you know, have fun. Mm -mm. And, and at the same time, we were also helping rebrand re human and trying to get them to have a different, uh, I guess, look in terms of <coughs> who they are, uh, the types of clothes that they wear. So, 
So we kept with this, and then they had a whole launch in, I think, in Glorieta. Okay. And Can you tell us more about this, though? This? What's that supposed to mean? I don't see it. Huh? Well, don't see, there's I mean, Rico Blanco. I just supposed to be fun. <laughs> I know. Yes, no, it's supposed to be fun. I mean, there's no philosophy behind them. Um, well, it's, well, the thing is the designs are, are actual abstract art that, that I do. Because a, a lot of times I do a lot of uh, fine art. Okay. And I think a lot of people like that work and they want to implement it into graphic design. Mm. So I do a lot of fine art. And somehow people like it and they also see it as graphic art. Uh, forgive me for asking mm -hmm. you this, but you can actually design something with absolutely no meaning. No. No, okay. Um, it's, with this, it's not so much in terms of meaning, but it's in terms of feeling. Uh, right. With this, we Just wanted something happy mood. Happy mood. Mm. So they, they have options. You can design something with uh, some philosophical background, which is fine. Or right. another thing that you can go for is emotion. Yeah, so it could be actually no meaning in a sense that there's no philosophy behind it, but just pure emotion. Emotion. So I want to show joy and mm -hmm. happiness here. Which is very difficult. How do you express joy in terms of uh, visuals? Okay. Um, again, this is uh, for the current campaign of human. Uh -huh. And... One of the things we designed was the type, the, the uh, typography, mm -hmm. and also the look of the photographs. Um, what do you mean the look of the photograph? Well, for this, since uh, they're our client, we also were the art directors as opposed to just design. Mm. So we wanted to give a certain look uh, for the photographs, whether it's let's see more in the blue colors or more in the red tones, desaturated a little bit. Um, that's that's where we came in. So a lot of it was when you think of design, it's not always just about you know like ornamental things and mm. stuff like that. It's really about visual communication. Right. So that's one of the things we want to express, that design deals with also visual communication. What this is trying to communicate? She's pretty. Oh, that's <laughs> pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you, I, I'm asking Nico because you were talking about colors. Oh, sure. Whether you go to blue, you go blue, you go mm. red. What are the emotions that, that actually people see or come out um, with a blue toned color or red? Well, with, with blue, it's more of a common color. Calming. Calming, as opposed to red, which is really uh, aggravating. And, you know, oddly enough, even for that chloroceptic thing, funny how we go back around. Yeah, because it's the you're same thing. About blue and red, <laughs> right? It goes back to that. Blue is a calming color. Mm. When you think of, you know, being in the beach. Right. Even if, even if the water and everything, there's this calming feeling, as opposed to where it's red and fire, very active, aggressive. Mm. So that's the big difference between the two. Okay. And then the next one is? Uh, this is a mural we did for, again, for human. Um, so again, instead of just you know doing stuff on computer, we actually paint physically. I, I love tactile things, so uh, for this we it's a huge wall. Uh, we just physically painted. Again, more design, just in terms of uh, a certain feel of, for the store. And then there are supposed to be well lines. Well, the lines again in terms of design, it's you can look at it one way. One way that we're, we're uh, trying to do here is. If you look at it from a straight angle, it makes your eye follow the line True. to make you go, let's say, from the bottom left or bottom right to the top left. So in terms of design, you also want to find a way to make your audience read whatever you're making, mm -hmm. whether it's from left to right, top to bottom. So it, there's a lot of things involved, you know. Uh, Isa was saying a lot of things. So <laughs> there's also a way to kind of tell the audience on how to look at it. Yeah. And the colors chosen are? From just fun, fun colors, uh, light, you know, um, so that because the the background's gray, true. So we need to figure out something that kind of pops. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously the yellow, the brown, and the blue. Yeah. Make a difference. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> you don't hate me, but what are those things? Which ones? Those white with the blue thing. Uh, what do you call it? It's puffy clouds. Oh, okay, they're clouds. <laughs> I wanted to ask you if they were clouds, but I wasn't sure. I might, I might That's embarrass okay. myself. No, 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 no. It's, but see, the great thing about this stuff, um, again, because I also come from you know, doing abstract art, so I try to incorporate that with, um, with graphic design, okay. more abstract, but in a graphic design right, sense. Right, right. Uh, this is something we just recently did uh, for Wedding Essentials. Mm, nice. um, this was very challenging. Uh, we had a very short amount of time, and we had to find a way to add some kind of graphic element mm. just to push the picture. Um, but the problem was the picture was very colorful already. Uh, it was in Cebu. Uh, and so it took us, actually, as Lisa was saying earlier, there's times where it just hits you, and there's times where 
you have to like, really wait for you know like weeks <laughs> trying to figure out what the hell do I do. Yeah. Um, this is one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Which the one that hits you fast? No, this one took this one took, took some forever. time. Well, not forever, but because we had a time frame, mm. <laughs> we had a time frame of maybe a week, mm. and but finally we figured something out. Very nice. <coughs> uh, these um, again, like I said, um, I do a lot of uh, physical art, and these are arts and skateboards. Does it help you if you do a lot of? Um, what were you? How do you, how did you describe that? Did you say physical? Uh, tactile and physical. Uh, physical art. Yeah. Um, Meaning like really painting yes, and yes, tactile. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. That, that's a big plus for a graphic designer. Well, I think for me personally, I think it's since I was doing a lot of visual effects, I was sitting on the computer too long and I wanted to get up and actually, yeah. you know, paint. Yeah. So it was a personal thing where I wanted to do it as opposed to just always sitting and getting, right now I'm just getting fat. So, <laughs> so you know, it's good to just get up and physically do work. All right, so anyway, before, <laughs> before we uh, get to the next gap, I wanted to talk to you about you coming home. You came home because you wanted to meet your old friend who you left when she was two years old as you moved to, to the States. Is that correct? N not she exactly. She was two? Well, she was two, but she wasn't my friend. She was two years old. Her <laughs> sisters were my friends. Um, but I came back just for my cousin's wedding. I really had no intentions to uh, come back. I had intentions to come back maybe in the future. Um, but my cousin had a wedding, so I came. She wanted me to be part of their wedding. Uh, and since my friends were neighbors, I went to say hello, and then, and then I finally got in touch with their younger sister, which is not <laughs> young anymore. So I was like, wow. <laughs> How did she look when she was two? <laughs> I'm sure you never even. Okay, long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then. And then. So um, you met up. We actually during that time I couldn't really talk to her because I didn't want to show her sister that I I want to talk to her more. Yeah, than the sister. Than the sister. So. Um, Why did the sister like you? No, no, no she's uh, been married. She, no, she was already <laughs> married. No, but the, you know we were friends from yeah. before, just catching up. I mean, I haven't been here for over 18 years, so yeah. a lot of catching up to do. And and then I left, and then I just you know left my email. We kept in touch, and then then I said you know. I can't do this. So I came back. <laughs> I, I quit everything. Uh, can you say that again? <laughs> I you just said to yourself that... What, what did I say? <laughs> I can't do this. I can't. I guess I can't do this. <laughs> I mean, drama, but I can't do this. I was very... A lot of drama. And then anyway, <laughs> but you have a, you have a company with, with your wife now. Um, this little studio yeah. uh, that we're doing a lot of design work, um, among other stuff. So. And, and uh, her name's Katu. 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 All right. <laughs> Was that her name when she was two? <laughs> uh, actually, they called her Kat Kat. Uh, Kat Kat. Ah, you see, my uh, meaning uh, didn't come <laughs> All right, Nico. We'll have uh, Lisa and Nico back a little later after the break. The answers to your question, questions when Chop Talk returns. Please stay tuned. <laughs>
Welcome back to Shop Talk. I'm Pinky Webb. We're still talking about graphic designing as a career option. We're again joined by Lisa Gutierrez, a graphic designer, and Nico Puertolano, a graphic designer who came home to the Philippines because of love. <laughs> 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 Baka mamaya the questions are more because of that, about Katu. About Katu. <laughs> From Damon of Manila, how much, ayun, good question, does one logo cost? <laughs> Lisa. You, you, you want to take that? Who's more expensive? Lisa <laughs> Nico. Nico. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of feel... It's a range. Yeah, I wouldn't want to really just peg a cost because... I think it also depends on the experience that a designer has. In what about Lisa's experience? <laughs> <laughs> My experience. Um, let's just say that the um, the cost that I put in making a logo design is very uh, fair. <laughs> um, paying attention to the creative process. You're like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, okay. For, um, not no, I have no yeah. idea. Is it like 20,000, 30,000, 40,000? 20 wanna, to 40, you want a range? To yeah. Uh, I guess let's Seriously. start with a minimum. Okay. From minimum would be 30. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We can, we, we can show the ano, logo, <laughs> Martha. Can we show the logo? Lisa did a, did a logo for Shop Talk. No? Subject for approval, kay Pia to. But anyway, <laughs> let, let's show this. Oh. Uh, the logos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ayan. Oh, yeah. One. Two, three, four. So you owe them <laughs> one hundred twenty. No, 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 no. No, that's not the way you, you, yeah, you cost it. I know you did it for free. <laughs> for the love of the oh, show. That's what, uh, no, that's what Lisa did in twenty minutes. All right. So, so it's a minimum of thirty. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Nico? Would you agree? I agree in what she said, but it depends on your experience and your. Actually, it really depends on your portfolio. Um. In in the states there are there All are right. there are standards mm -hmm. on on what you should price. There's there's a book, there's a there's an association yeah. called the Graphic Arts Guild, and mm -hmm. they do have uh, for artists a protection. So you have you, you so you know the standard mm -hmm. rates. Do you have that in the Philippines? No. Sadly no. Not. All right. My son <laughs> likes to take take up graphic design in college. Is that the same with multimedia arts? Is it true that it's in demand here and abroad? Is it the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's here. It's either called multimedia arts or information design. Okay. So. Contact numbers, please, of Lisa and Nico. Go ahead. Uh, uh, mine <laughs> is 0915-572-2695. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the works at 2720.tv. That's our website. Okay. Lisa? My email address is Lisa's room um, at Let's Gmail. Spell that. It's L-I-Z-Z-A-S-R-O-O-M at gmail.com and you can see my work at lisasroom.com all right is it a must to study graphic arts what do you think <laughs> is it a must if you, you want to do it sure yeah <laughs> it'll if you help. want a career yeah. yes it will help have, career. if you have the means and the opportunity to get your education it doesn't have to be a degree even a short course mm -hmm. i think it's very beneficial mm -hmm. all right maybe just one last um word from our guests mm -hmm. maybe for those who want to take up or be be, a, be graphic designers mm -hmm. in the future, mm -hmm. um, you, what would you say to them? What's important in order to succeed in the business? I think passions and patience. Passion, passion and, and patience. patience. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. I think you just really have to love what you're doing and if you're enjoying it, the creative juices will just wow, flow. Yeah. And humility, yeah. like I just said, exactly. right? you have to be humble. Yeah. You'll get a lot of rejections. All right, Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you too. And uh, I'm sure after this show, you'll be uh, okay guesting in other shows. <laughs> Nico, thanks also. Yes, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. If you have